census is taken every 10 years for that constitutionally mandated purpose. What is not in today's data, like I think I mentioned, nothing for local areas, cities, counties, um, only states in this go around. We'll get to see that local data in August. Um, that's what Census Bureau is um, projecting and, and stating that they will release that in mid-August. No demographic data, so we don't see any particulars about age or race and ethnicities. And then finally, no socioeconomic data that used to be on the census, like income, education levels. Right now, all we have are population counts and the socioeconomic data come from a new, relatively new product called the American Community Survey. So maybe um, some of you have used that in the past for some of those key figures on income, poverty, and uh, things like that. All right, so here's our highlights, getting right into it. New count for Nebraska, 1.961 million. Um, this is a little bit higher than what we projected or what our last estimates from the Census Bureau themselves would have stated. Uh, they, as we talked last fall and did some other uh, events, we thought we'd be in the 1.94 to 1.95 range. So it is coming out about 10,000 higher than um, our high estimate. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, one notable factor uh, we did in uh, pass West Virginia to become the 37th largest state. And in doing some background research and <laughs> running some numbers quick throughout the afternoon, found out that we have not actually improved our ranking of total population um, all the way back since the 1900 census. So at that time we ranked as like the 21st or lar so largest state and that has continually trended downward as other places have, have become more populated. Um, so we were 38th in 2010, so now we popped one higher. So uh, uh, just kind of a notable thing there, kind of a tidbit, I guess. Next, um, we will maintain our current three seats in the U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, we were expected to, uh, given good growth throughout the decade that the population estimates showed, we were not in danger to lose a seat. But when the decade started, it was definitely within the realm of possibility that we could have lost a seat. But U.S. growth um, slowed a little bit. Our growth was relatively strong, as we'll see in a minute. And uh, the combination of those two things took away the risk of losing a congressional seat. Uh, we will see the, the district boundaries change per that redistricting process that the unicameral will go through um, later on this fall. So, you know, we, we could talk a little bit about that from what the estimates show, but the bottom line is that, and, and not only Nebraska, but all states will have um, their boundaries change if they have more than one district. Uh, finally, on this slide, giving you the growth number here of 135,000 since 2010. That's a 7.4% increase. Um, we'll talk about that level in a minute, but uh, one key factor would be that the growth rate ranking of this 7.4% would be 21st highest among the states. And uh, that is an improvement from where we were either last decade in the 2000s when we ranked 30th or in the 1990s when we were you know, in about the bottom quarter of states ranking 37th. Um, I couldn't pull the numbers this fast, but um, this might be one of our better growth rate rankings ever. We will see in a minute how um, we know, we were able to match the U.S. growth rate, and that hasn't happened since at least 1900. So we do have some unique, notable things going on within uh, Nebraska here. So I'm glad you're here as media to help report on that. I like to put in a picture uh, just to let us remember that we are talking about real people um, within all these numbers. Sometimes it's easy to lose sight of that. And we'll see that a lot of our growth is from birth succeeding deaths. So have the picture of the young child here, just to remember that uh, we are talking about real people. Okay, other highlights. Um, that 7.4% growth rate that I mentioned is right in between where we were in the 1990s when we really grew quickly, kind of rebounding from the 1980s when we had the farm crisis and a recession early in the decade that led to a lot of out migration during that decade. Um, last decade in the 2000s, we were at 6.7%. So uh, we were able to exceed that. And going into today's numbers, we thought 
the estimates suggested we'd actually trail the 2000s growth rate slightly. Um, but again, our, our relatively high count um, did lead to uh, a better number. So if, if we look at a chart and compare the growth, besides this 8.4% in the 1990s, this current growth rate is the highest going all the way back to the 1910s. So to have something that's relatively strong, um, hasn't been seen very often in 100 years, that is notable. So uh, good population growth for us. And generally speaking, that's viewed as a positive because it provides more people to um, purchase goods and services to help local economies. So then that helps business owners thrive and, and the economy kind of has a positive spiral. So. Okay, um, taking a look at two components of population change. One is from births and deaths. So we did have nearly 100,000 more births than deaths in the last decade. That would account for almost three quarters of the overall population growth of roughly 135,000 people. So that is still um, the predominant way that um, Nebraska is able to achieve population growth. But we also did have a net in migration of over 35,000. So uh, we'll see that that is a bit of a outlier versus history. It marks the third consecutive decade that we have had net in migration. And again, prior to that, between the 1920s and 1980s, we had out migration each and every decade. So that's been a bit of a shift in trend over the last three decades here, uh, continued and, and we'll see where that relative level ranks. Again, like to talk about real people and, and here's one of our uh, students moving in to Nebraska. So um, that's something we've been seeing these last three decades is more people moving in than moving away from the state. Okay, wanted to touch just very briefly about our response to the 2020 census because it was very good. Uh, people and households uh, returned the forms at very high rates. We'll see that we ranked fourth highest for what we call self-response. And that is when a person uh, fills it out by mail and sends it back in or completes it online. There was also a telephone option, um, but that wasn't very widely used. But anyway, almost 72% of our households responded on their own and that ranked relatively highly. Just want to note that even though this number is well below 100%, when census went with their door-to-door -door follow up operations, they stated in some of their reports that they we got up to 99.9% .9 of households being enumerated. So um, almost all states were at that 99.9% .9 level. So we got very close, if not full, completion um, on that. Here's the list of the top 10 states for this uh, self response. As mentioned, Nebraska ranking um, fourth, but uh, above Iowa. And uh, I, I, I didn't double check my numbers, but I'm pretty sure Iowa exceeded us last time around. So that is a switch. And we were well above the US grow, uh, response rate of 67% um, by several percentage points. So we did very well. A couple of notes on that. Um, we did have a little bit higher self-response than in 2010. So that's a good thing because when people have time to fill out their forms, uh, they do so more accurately. And there's always kind of a natural hesitancy to talk to a census taker at your door. Um, so uh, it provides better data and also less costly data to the Census Bureau and ultimately the taxpayer. Um, we ranked fifth in 2010. So again, generally speaking, Nebraska's are very civic minded and do their duty uh, filling out the census and, and a lot of other, other ways that uh, Nebraska's are involved um, in civic life. I uh, also think it's relevant that we did have more time due to COVID delays in non-response follow-up for people to self-respond. And that allowed the uh, Census Bureau to send an additional mailing that helped pop the rate a little bit. And then when people went door to door, the census enumerators, they would leave behind a postcard if nobody answered the door. And that postcard included the website to go to to complete the census online. So a lot of people uh, did that and that was a positive Im improvement in this decade as well because we did not have an online response option back in 2010. So on online response helped overall. Okay, not gonna spend much time here. This is more of a reference slide uh, for when we can send out a PDF just to give you all the US and Nebraska population values over time. Um, again, we were at 1.8 million in, in 2010. 
now um, approaching the 2 million mark. So that, that is um, a milestone soon to be achieved. When we look at the population growth um, in raw number term, a couple things here, you can see um, 50s through the 70s we were pretty consistent in about the 80,000 person range. The 1980s farm crisis, we only achieved about 10% of that growing by 8,000 but then a large rebound um, in the 1990s to grow by 133,000. You'll notice that this number is higher than that. And uh, I'd have to go back to double check, but, but this might be our largest growth in raw persons in one particular decade ever. Um, I'd have to find out, because obviously when the state was settled, it was growing very quickly at that point in time. But uh, you, you can see that that's a relatively strong number in the post-World War II era. Conversely, uh, for the US, uh, it had one of the lower growth rates in raw number in, in recent memory, a um, little bit higher than the 80s, but again, not, not by much. So we'll see the growth in a percentage rate um, coming on the last half of this table. So again, lots of numbers here, don't need to pay real close attention to any particular one, but notice here that Nebraska did match the US growth rate. And that is something we haven't seen um, in the recent memory. So perhaps a better way to look at that is on a graph. And that's what I'm gonna show you on the next slide. So again, this table is just for reference in case you need to put something in your stories. Um, all the <laughs> numbers are compiled right here for ease of access. Okay, so this is a graph taking a look at Nebraska's population growth over time, each decade since the 1900s, starting on the left here to the 2010s. And here is this, again, relatively good growth number for the 2010s coming in between the last two decades. And again, if you take this 1990s highest growth of 8.4% out, you'd have to go back 100 years to get to this 8.7% back in the 1910s when you know, some of far Western Nebraska was definitely not very uh, heavily settled yet. So it, it does stand out. Then the red line is the difference between Nebraska's growth rate and the US growth rate. So for example, this 3% that's being plotted there, that stemmed from the difference of nationally, the US growing 9.7%, Nebraska grew 6.7, so that's the three percentage points that we trailed it by that's been the being graphed there. And notice how all this red line is below the, the zero line. Um, so we've steadily trailed the U.S. growth rate over time, but now here in 20, the 2010s decade, for the first time in at least 100 years, we're matching the U.S. growth rate. So that that is... Um, something that we haven't seen uh, definitely uh, for a long period of time. We thought we would trail it slightly uh, this decade, but it was able to uh, match the growth. Okay, here's a map that the Census Bureau put together. So I just copied it right over. You can see where we're at relative to our peers and very similar to last decade, we were able to exceed the growth rates in both Iowa and Kansas, our best comparison states. Um, you'll see for border states, we, we did slightly trail South Dakota, and then Colorado is, of course, a very fast-growing area. Colorado was able to um, achieve growth that will allow them to gain a congressional seat um, in the U.S. House of Representatives. Otherwise, all bordering states are remaining at their same level as what they currently have. So thought I'd plop in very quickly a growth rate ranking for you to see where that 21st um, level is and which states are above us. And again, some notable ones such, such as California not growing as quickly as what we are here in Nebraska. So 7.4% uh, and ranking 21st, definitely doing well. And again, an improvement from ranking 30th last decade but the states are there so you can see some of the fastest growing. Not too many nearby states on here, but you can reference the map. Okay, just a couple of last slides for how our population has changed. So there's two ways, births and deaths. Um, looking at this first um, graph is of, of births versus deaths. And you'll see that in all the decades since the 1920s, we've had more births than deaths leading to population growth. The red line is looking at it as a percentage basis um, kind of the level of growth divided by the population at the starting start of the decade. 
So you'll see in the baby boom, obviously we had a lot of births relative to deaths that's come down, had a little baby boom echo in the 1980s. And now kind of we're up tied with the lowest levels that we've seen. And this will probably continue to trend downward, especially as our deaths kick higher, as, as our large uh, baby boom segment of the population ages into age ranges with higher mortality. So just to put that in perspective, it has all the numbers in here, but again, about 100,000 um, more births than deaths. That's down slightly from what we saw in the 2000s, but uh, definitely higher than certain other decades. Okay, the other way that the population changes is by people moving in and moving out, net migration. So same style of graph looking all the way back to the 1920s. As I mentioned in the highlights, we had seven consecutive decades of net out migration, but then these last three decades have been able to achieve net in migration. And you'll see here that the, the level here in the 2010s is, is very strong uh, relative to history. Um, about about 37,000 more people moving in than move away. So just highlighting here that that out migration trend has changed to in migration recently. And that's what's led to the higher overall levels of growth that we've seen these last three decades. Okay, just a couple quick comments on what to expect in the future. The redistricting data, um, which will give counts all the way down to individual blocks, but most notably um, the first counts for cities and counties uh, will we'll come out um, later this summer and fall. August 16th is a date that um, they have mentioned from the Census Bureau, so we'll see if they hit that um, deadline or not. There'll be different formats of the data, but just we'll mention that we'll do some other events, including our, our annual data conference on August 26th to go over those numbers. Um, but I'll, but I'll just miss the talk about disclosure avoidance in the, in the interest of time. Also this fall, we will see um, socioeconomic data from the American Community Survey. Most specifically, annual estimates will tell us our first look at income and poverty as influenced um, by COVID in the 2020 year. So we'll get to see those for large geographies and then all places later on in December. So that that's census style information that's now collected on that particular product. So we get it more frequently than once every 10 years. We will also get additional um, detailed data, the, the age and sex information, home ownership rates. Um, census hasn't said much about this yet, but I kind of expect them by the end of the year. There'll be another product with very detailed um, cross tabulations uh, coming early next spring. Notable on that is we will see our first decennial census data counts for um, Somali and Sudanese ancestries. That's a question that we get all the time. Um, it wasn't available on prior censuses, but it will be on this 2020 census once that data is released, probably early next spring. And finally, um, beyond the census, you know, then we start into the new population estimates program to see what our current population is looking like and to make projections for what the 2030 census might show. So this will be important to have these new population estimates out by um, December 31st of this year, because that will show our pandemic related changes such as migration, a lot of questions of our people moving out of New York and other heavily populated areas, and maybe Nebraska will be a beneficiary of some of those moves. So. That is what I have prepared for you under uh, relatively short notice here. So um, happy to open it up for q and I think uh, we'll have Sam kind of direct some of this. So you can either um, put your uh, quick note in the chat or maybe there's a raise hands feature on this one so that we can kind of take them one at a time. But uh, for the moment, I'll stop screen share but I'll probably come back to it to reference particular slides that might be able to answer the questions. All right, thank you, David. So first question we have in the chat is from Matt Olberding, is any explanation for why the state did so well over the past decade in terms of population growth? Well, you know, our Births and deaths are, are kind of uh, a standard positive population growth factor. Uh, if you look at fertility rates, uh, Nebraska is usually in the top five states. If, if not, and then we're in the top 10. And that goes across almost every demographic that you can analyze, uh, whether it's high income or lower income, 
higher education levels, lower education levels, um, born in the US or foreign born. Uh, we're, we're just very strong on our birth rates. So that helps lead to growth. But the wild card is always migration. And uh, you, know, you, you can see how we've tended to have out migration over time. And uh, these last three decades, we've been flipped that around to net in migration. So that is definitely a change. And it, it looks, you know, versus the estimate that that's the component where census was probably off just a little bit in their estimates. It's one of the hardest things for them to identify, especially international in migration. So uh, we'll, we'll get more detail and, and more metrics as they continue to put out some of their quality factors. But it's, it's most likely that the, our higher numbers due to a little bit stronger migration um, here in the 2010s decade. All right, thank you. Another question, just as a housekeeping note uh, that came in, uh, will these slides be available later on, David? I can work with you to make those available too. Yeah, um, I, I will send you the files right away. And if you could send them out to media or, or maybe if, if folks want to post in the chat their email address so we can compile them, uh, that'd be great. But uh, yes, we'll definitely share things because uh, once we have it put together, um, we want those numbers out there and, and available for use. Awesome. And then uh, another question, do you have a sense, uh, this is from Grant Schulte, uh, do you have a sense of whether Nebraska's growth trend compared to the US might continue? And is it possible that the state could outpace the US population growth in the next decade? Well, it's definitely possible. I mean, we're, we're right there right now. I mean, uh, we're probably within a fraction I didn't. I didn't run the to more than one decimal point to see if we were slightly above or slightly below the official U.S. growth rate. So, uh, you know, generally speaking, again, our our natural change is relatively good versus the rest of the U.S. So, a lot of the Northeast states, specific, uh, particularly, have very low birth rates and don't have much natural change. So, that is a positive population factor. That even if it slows it's likely to keep us very competitive for um, growing the population at, at a strong rate. And there are a lot of states that have an older population than what we do here in Nebraska. That's uh, in part because we have a lot of kids, but also in part because a lot of folks do move away to Arizona, Texas, or Florida, and then spend their retirement years there and then would, would become a uh, potential uh, statistic in those locations regarding uh, death if they eventually pass away. So um, we maintain a good, strong natural change. And right now, at least in, in the last several decades, we've been able to achieve that net in migration as well. So both positive factors are leading to the growth and, and we'll see if it continues. Always a lot of wild cards out there and we don't know what the, the pandemic recovery is gonna look like, but uh, last several decades, that's been the trend. All right. And then a question from Daniel Wheaton. Can you provide some context on where you think, based off the AACS estimates, the growth in Nebraska is? Is it all in the big cities? Are growth rates in Lincoln and Omaha compar comparable to, let's say, the Tri-Cities? Yeah. So we do get information not only from the American Community Survey, but again, the Population Estimates Program provides those local figures. And uh, you know, while we don't have the official counts for local areas yet, all indications are that so far in the 2010s uh, that the patterns were very similar to what they were in the 2000s with the urban areas growing quite quickly. Our medium-sized communities uh, such as Norfolk, Columbus, Scotts Bluff, um, places that have a city of 10,000, they're holding their own growing some. Uh, you know, Kearney is a pretty fast grower, relatively speaking, but still not as fast as what Lincoln or Omaha are, are increasing their population. And then the rural areas are either holding steady or having outright declines, and in some locations, large declines. So uh, that's why our three uh, boundaries regarding the US congressional districts will shift. Um, in, in the preliminary numbers, uh, we thought that the third district might need to gain around 50,000 population uh, to equalize with the other two more urban-based districts. So we'll, we'll see again in August what those particular numbers are. But with this overall growth number being higher, um, it's to be seen whether that's gonna create a need for more change or relatively less. Maybe it's 
rural places in the third district that uh, outperformed what the population estimates were suggesting. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, but uh, the general trends are definitely faster growth in the urban areas. And another one here, what do these figures indicate for congressional reappointment in 2030? How safe are Nebraska's three seats? Okay, uh, before this was well, the second half to that prior question regarding comparisons to other locations, and, and we, could, could, we could pull that data um, for the requester, uh, at least off the population estimates and, and see where we are ranking or, or compared. So that's definitely possible. Could, would be happy to do that. Um, regarding for 2030, um, we're in better shape. Uh, you know, I, I didn't include the slide, but there's a priority ranking relative to the 435th seat. And uh, to, uh, in, in 2010, we had the 417th spot. So we kind of had 18 to spare. In the newest ranking of that, uh, we're now at 415. So we actually uh, improved by two places. So we have 20 seats to spare. Uh, in, in kind of the priority ranking before we would lose a seat. So if we can be um, near or just slightly trailing that U.S. growth rate, we should be able to keep the three seats in 2030. Again, uh, I'll hedge and say there's a lot that can change, um, not only here in Nebraska, but nationally. Um, so time will tell, and, and we'll start to get indications of that as we move further into the decade. But right now, we're starting off this decade in much better position than when we started the 2010s and we're looking toward the 2020 counts because what we said at that time in 2010 was that, okay, if, if we would have trailed the US growth rate by 3% again, the way that we did in the 2000s, we would have been very close to that um, 435 cut line. But since we were able to uh, achieve and match the US growth rate, that um, definitely kept helped keep our um, ranking in a position where it was safe and not at risk of losing a congressional seat. Thank you, David. Uh, any other questions from the folks in the chat? Going once, going twice. And most people um, ha either have my email address or, or I can post it in the chat here as, as we finish up because uh, we are always happy to help. And a lot of times there's questions that come up in, in people's, um, uh, as they're writing the story, you know, that, it, that it, it comes and you wanna see or just double check something. We're always very happy to uh, follow up and provide any information that you might need, especially relative to uh, history and, and how this particular set of census numbers compares to the past. So. Uh, my email address is there in the chat, so feel free to reach out and we will um, get you that information you need. Awesome. Thank you, David. And I'll share my email address as well. If you would like to have any assets from today or recording from this presentation, go ahead and shoot me an email um, and we'll be able to connect, uh, con connect you with those things. So any other questions before we kind of duck out here? All right, thank you for, for joining us, everybody. Uh, stay cool out there. It's a toasty spring day here in Nebraska, but uh, thanks everybody and have a good afternoon. Okay, appreciate you attending.